Hello, my name is Alan Prost and I'm continuing on our series of Mechanical Ventilation, Module 4 for RESP 220. And today we're going to talk about mandatory minute ventilation in this short video. Mandatory minute ventilation is a rather unique mode um, in that it uses volume control and it's an intermittent mandatory ventilation. So it allows spontaneous breathing in and around those mandatory or assisted breaths. All right. What's unique about this is the term mandatory minute ventilation. And what we're going to do is we're going to discuss how we set up that this is going to guarantee a specific mandatory minute ventilation and yet allow the patient to spontaneously breathe around that. So generally speaking, this is actually a continuous spontaneous mode of ventilation. In fact, it's pressure support with this minimum minute ventilation guarantee. Generally speaking, what happens with this mode is that if a patient drops down below the minute ventilation that you've established on the ventilator, then the ventilator will kick in with mandatory or assisted breaths. All right, so they could be mandatory or assisted breaths. If they remain above this minute ventilation, then the ventilator will just allow the patient to continuously breathing on the pressure support level that you have set on the ventilator. So it's really a safety mode. It's a safety net mode. So if a patient goes apneic for some reason, or you have a patient with a, a very um, insecure ventilatory drive that may kick in and kick out, this mode assures that they're going to get a, at least a very minis, minimum minute ventilation. As soon as they drop below that, the ventilator will kick in to give them either mandatory or assisted breaths. If they're spontaneously breathing and don't require it, it never kicks in. All right. So it's kind of a, uh, a safety mode. All right. If the patient falls below the minute ventilation established by you, the operator, then the ventilator will kick in giving those mandatory and assist breaths. Otherwise, it allows the patient to spontaneously breathe in the mode of pressure support. All right. It'll only give the number of mandatory breaths required to return the patient's minute ventilation to the set minute ventilation. So if they drop down just a little bit, but they're still spontaneously breathing, it'll kick in with an IMV breath to just augment their minute ventilation requirements to boost them up above that minute ventilation, that goal that you've established on the ventilator. All right. So that's very different than just regular IMV where you've got a set rate or a set number of mechanical breaths. With this one, it's using the brain of the ventilator or the computer to decide on how many augmented or mandatory or assisted breaths the patient requires. Sometimes it's none, sometimes it's a few, and sometimes it can be all of the patient's minute ventilation requirements. All right. So the minute ventilation is set indirectly via the respiratory rate and tidal volume, just like on a regular ventilator. But if the patient breathes above the minute ventilation established by that respiratory rate, say this is 12 and this is 500, so we've established a minute ventilation requirement of 6 liters, if the, as long as the patient keeps breathing above that 6 liters per minute, then they're going to just be getting the regular pressure support. They'll be getting no mandatory or assisted breaths whatsoever. The moment they drop down below that, though, all right, so if they drop down below that minute ventilation requirement, then the ventilator will kick in to give that set tidal volume. All right, and it'll give enough breaths to make sure that you meet that set minute ventilation requirement, in this case, six liters. All right, the number of mandatory breaths depends on how much the patient's breathing on their own. So if they all say they're doing, say, four or liters per minute, well, then it'll kick in and give them enough breaths to bump them over that six liters okay that you've established so if they go totally out think of course it would fall back to our rate of 12 500 and to give them the six liters all right and so you can get anything from zero to 12 breaths per minute to augment or make mandatory their minute ventilation okay if the patient is totally apneic they'll get the mandatory breaths set by the rate so in this case 12 all right so generally speaking, we establish this mode of ventilation for patients that don't really require IMV or a ventilatory assistance. They are fine on the pressure support. What we do is we establish this minimum goal just as a safety net. 
All right. So like with many of our modes, we set the rate, we set the title volume. And remember, this is going to establish the minute ventilation required for the patient. Um, we may or may not set up the flow depending on the manufacturer. All right. But often we do. We set up a pressure support level. It could, the pressure support level could theoretically be zero. But generally speaking, we're going to set up something like five to seven. All right. Probably five to seven to overcome the work of breathing through the endotracheal tube, or it might be as high as 12 centimeters of water pressure per minute to augment their inspiratory efforts. Of course, we're going to set up a PEEP, we're going to set up an FiO2, and we're going to set the sensitivity. The PEEP, depending on how much oxygen they're on, and of course, we're going to manage these as they required. The sensitivity we always set on our ventilators. Okay, so this establishes our minute ventilation goal. All right. The pressure support decides on how much augmentation that we're going to give our patient. All right. Do you want them to do a lot of work, just a little bit of work, or almost no work? All right. That's a question for you to decide clinically. All right. The phase variables, well, we, these are difficult because it depends on what's happening with each breath. The phase variables could be just like volume control or pressure regulated volume control, or it can just be like pressure support. It depends what's going on with the patient. If the patient makes an inspiratory effort and they trigger the breath, then it could be assisted, or it could all be spontaneous breaths. And this is generally what's occurring with this ventilator. All right. In fact, it's unusual that we have the patient coming in and um, kicking in with this minute ventilation requirement for most of our patients. Usually we've got the pressure support level set correctly and the patient can maintain that work of breathing and it's seldom that this kicks in. So it's one of those modes that it's nice to use, but hopefully the minute ventilation requirements will not be uh, not used often. All right. Okay. So what kind of patient do we put this on? It's a patient that we're not sure of their ventilatory drive. All right. It could be a post-op patient. It could be a neurologically injured patient, or it could just be used as a safety net. All right. So any patient we're not sure of, and we want to make sure that they get a, a, at least a certain minute ventilation. Now, this is my challenge with this mode. I'm not sure what is the minute minimum minute ventilation we establish on this ventilator for this patient. I don't know what that is. All right. Is it six? Is it five? Is it four? Right. And even when I talk to uh, a lot of clinicians who use this mode, they often set it up even as low as three liters per minute. Now, that's insufficient for any patient that I'm aware of, but they often do set it up for three liters per minute. And then, of course, they set up the pressure support level. And this is the key element. The idea of the mandatory minute ventilation is often set up as a safety net in this mode. All right. Um, so it's a little controversy, controversial on how we use this mode. But generally speaking, my problem is I don't know what number to set up here for the patient. If the patient is uh, already getting a, a minute ventilation of five liters per minute, all right, and they've got normal blood gases on that, do I set up four liters per minute then for the MVV and then let them breathe on pressure support? And then if the pressure support dips down lower than the four, then they get some mandatory breaths? Well, if they're riding it at four, if they go totally apneic, their CO2 will go up and they'll be acidotic. So that's unacceptable. So this is my personal problem with this mode. Um, and the few times that I've actually seen this mode on patients, they've never been riding the MMV. They've been getting no assisted or augmented breaths except with the pressure support level. So that's been my experience. Please correct me and let me know what your experience is once you're a practicing therapist. But this is the concept between the mode of MMV or mandatory minute ventilation. Thank you very much.